Could this really be it? Is this the end of Tegrity Weed forever? Over 25 years, we have watched Randy evolve into the weed-loving, money-focused, manager-getting, pandemic-creating hyperbole of a man that he has become. It was a natural progression, from a simple small-town geologist to a ruthless yet idiotic businessman. But the release of The Streaming Wars Part 2 has left many with ideas about the future of his character. Is this really the end of the Tegrity Farms era of South Park? Well, with the intro out of the way, let's get into it. No more Tegrity. The end of Tegrity Farms. Before we get to that though, let's break down the rest of the special. I thought this was a strong follow-up to The Streaming Wars Part 1. It had lots of funny moments and ended each plotline in a pretty satisfying way. There were definitely some parts I didn't like as much too, but we'll get to those. This special continues basically exactly where we left off and follows three main plotlines. PP and his continued dominance in the streaming service industry, becoming so dominant that the entirety of Colorado has replaced all water with P. Then we have Token, Butters, and Cartman, who are searching for Token's father who went missing in the previous episode. If you'll remember, he was seriously injured by a man bear pig who was a metaphor for global warming and his whereabouts are unknown to the viewer as well. Also, I am just now thinking about how insane and confusing all of this sounds if you don't have the context of the first part, so you can go watch my recap of that if you're confused. The final plotline follows Randy and his journey in rebuilding his character. We'll save this one for last, of course. So let's go ahead and start with the PP storyline. Now, a warning for those with weak stomachs, this entire plotline is absolutely disgusting as it has a pretty heavy focus on gross out humor. If you can't handle that, I recommend skipping to the next part of the video which will be labeled in the description. PP Streaming Service, PP Plus, has become incredibly successful. He is taking over the entire state of Colorado, replacing all water with pee. To promote the business even further, they create countless commercials with tons of celebrity endorsements. These also just so happen to be the same celebrities you may have seen in countless ads for cryptocurrency and crypto exchanges. Their inclusion is a pretty obvious commentary on the nature of their deals with these crypto companies, about how if they're willing to sell out for these companies, they would be willing to do pretty much anything for a paycheck. And man do these commercials get repulsive, with the celebrities doing things like showering in it, drinking it, and even- uh, um, sorry. Bobbing for apples in it. Jesus. It is incredibly gross, and while I did think it was funny for the most part, there were definitely moments when I had to pause and take a breather. And while this is clearly making fun of these celebrities selling out, I think it could also be a commentary on the crypto market itself, as they encourage people to buy into this market that almost immediately tanked, so you might as well be selling them pee, because I mean, what is really the difference at this point? The main purpose of the PP plot, however, follows closely with the previous episode by heavily criticizing streaming services. After the first part came out, many people discussed how PP was likely meant to represent Paramount+, Plus with his name sharing the same initials and his actions reflecting that of Paramount+. Plus. In this part, they left no doubt, as they go into depth about the questionable business model of these companies. They are pretty direct in their criticism, using PP to discuss how the business model of these streaming services is to get in early and go into debt with the hopes of a high market evaluation. The P itself throughout this plot is clearly meant to represent the quality of the content from these streaming services, as there is no longer a need for them to produce quality content since people will use it anyways. Why give people water, which is hard to get, when you can just give them pee? There's tons of it, and people will still use it. The fact that they decided to criticize Paramount Plus without hesitation is an incredibly ballsy move, but then again, I really would expect nothing less from this show. The idea of Matt and Trey immediately targeting the company that just paid them $900 million is honestly the most South Park move that I could imagine. They really continue to remind us time and time again that truly nothing is off limits. You just get in, fuck everything up, pay people money you don't have, and try to get a bigger market evaluation, yes? The other main plot in this episode follows Cartman, Butters, and Token as they search for Token's missing father. This actual storyline wasn't all that interesting, as there wasn't much that really happened. Basically, Cartman thinks that Tolkien is trying to sleep with his mom for some reason, so he convinces Butters to help him deal with Tolkien. 
When they arrive, they realize that Tolkien is a victim of what's going on and not actually participating in it, so they decide to team up and go find Tolkien's dad at the water park. When they arrive, they discover trapped below the water park are Pig Bear Girl and Chuck Chuck. They are the wife and daughter of Man Bear Pig, and they are being held captive underneath the water park as Pee Pee forces Man Bear Pig to work for him. So in my opinion, this is probably the worst aspect of the special, as the storyline kind of goes nowhere. When they introduced these characters, I really expected them to play a larger part in the story, but in the end, all they ended up being was Man Bear Pig's family. I don't know, I guess I just expected to learn about them and find out maybe how they came to be Man Bear Pig's family, or what they do. Like how Man Bear Pig is climate change, I kind of figured they would say that Pig Bear Girl was interchangeable with pollution or something. Like I thought they would make their characters' metaphors similarly to Man Bear Pig, but they really just ended up being the motivation for Man Bear Pig to turn on PP once they were released. Also this is kind of random, but I feel the need to mention it. Why does Chuck Chuck look like he's wearing a mask? Like I was waiting for the entire episode for it to be revealed that he was actually someone in a costume or something, but that never happened, so I guess that's just what his face looks like. It's kind of a weird design if you ask me, but I digress. So while I felt this plotline was lacking in the story elements, I did still enjoy it solely thanks to the interactions between the boys. There were so many funny moments between the boys, mostly relating to Cartman's breast augmentation. I gotta say, for as dumb of a joke as it is to make Cartman have massive breast implants, they really pulled it off and managed to constantly make it funny. Whether it's Cartman constantly reminding people to look him in the eyes, or him wearing a bikini to the water park and trying to walk like some kind of sexy secret agent, it was all pretty funny. Undoubtedly my favorite part was this visual gag that they did after Butters and Cartman were caught spying on Tolkien, and Tolkien comes out to look for them and they make a quick decision to hide behind the tree. Eric, I can see you! There's no way you can see it, just stay still. All around, this part of the special was just okay. Like I said, I wish the man bear pig stuff played a larger role or was at least better explained, but all of the gags with Carbon and the boys ended up delivering an experience that was still pretty funny. Now, with all of that out of the way, it's time to get into what is likely the reason that most of you are here. I used to be a scientist. Do you remember that? Something I didn't mention in my review of The Streaming Wars Part 1 was how everyone began referring to Randy as Karen. This was obviously a reference to how the name Karen has become the term for what are most commonly entitled soccer moms who tend to cause a scene in public. Randy acquired this nickname because he sort of had become a Karen, always feeling entitled to what he wants and causing scenes to get it. This was a relatively minor part of The Streaming Wars Part 1. However, in Part 2, Karen Randy takes center stage. The special begins with Randy going full Karen. He is now rocking the classic Karen haircut and has been caught on camera having meltdowns and asking for managers all across the world. These videos have gone incredibly viral, and because of this, Randy decides to do a bit of self-reflection. He thinks back to the Randy that he was before all of this, referencing some of his actions from early episodes and reflecting on what changed. I was the one who warned the town about a volcano. I warned them about the day after tomorrow, and then it all became about weed. This leads Randy to deciding that he's not happy with who he has become, and that it is time to make a change. Cue a montage of Randy getting rid of any trace of his weed business and returning to his job as a geologist, set to an absolutely beautiful song entitled We Missed You Randy, that details the journey of Randy's character throughout the years. Side note, if you want a detailed history of how Randy's character evolved to this point, I highly recommend you check out my boy Johnny Tuchello's video discussing the topic. It's honestly one of the best South Park analysis videos I've seen, and I very highly recommend it. The song includes some lyrics that are pretty on the nose in terms of the place Randy's character is in. As he returns to his geologist job, he comes up with a plan to help end this drought once and for all. I've gotta say, this was probably my favorite part of the special, as it really did feel like Randy returning to his roots. Randy helping the town solve a problem is literally one of the oldest formats South Park has, with Randy saving the town from the volcano in the third episode of the show. I have to admit, it was refreshing to see this side of Randy again, as it did feel like his character had been changed a lot for the sake of Tegrity Farms. Unfortunately, this return to form is cut short when, in an ironic twist of events, Sharon and Stan end up begging Randy to return to his Karen self in order to force their way into the water park to save the day. 
Randy is reluctant at first, worried that if he returns, he may never be able to break out of this character again. When Sharon reveals that she had saved the last bit of Tegrity, Randy realizes what he must do for the greater good. He marches down to that water park and demands to see the manager harder than anyone has before. As he makes his way into the water park, he finds Pee Pee and causes a massive scene, exposing him for his manipulation of the streaming industry. That's when Man Bear Pig arrives to take down Randy and put an end to this. But wait, what is this? Just then, Cartman and the boys break out from under the water park and bring Man Bear Pig's family out, reuniting them with Man Bear Pig. This means that he no longer has any reason to help Pee Pee, so he immediately turns on him and puts an end to the streaming service. Just then, Randy has a revelation as to how they can end the drought, and he puts his plan into action to finally save the day. All around, I thought this special was a pretty solid follow-up to part one. While it definitely had its issues, it was still pretty funny and well done. If I had to compare the streaming wars to the post-COVID specials, I would say post-COVID was definitely far superior to the streaming wars. Not to say that these were bad, I actually really enjoyed them, but I thought post-COVID was S-tier South Park, where this felt more like a low A-tier. Now when it comes to Randy and Tegrity, this really did feel like the culmination of the Tegrity Farms storyline. Matt and Trey have always been aware of how the fans feel about Tegrity Farms, in that it has always been a pretty divisive aspect of the show, with many fans loving and praising it as well as many fans despising it entirely. They have been relentlessly trolling the fans about Tegrity ever since the first episode back in... Wow, it's been four years already? Jeez. Anyways, they've been aware of how much people hate this new Randy since the beginning, and there have been countless times when they've made the fans think that Tegrity might finally be ending just to say psych and throw it in the viewer's face because they think it's funny. This time felt different, however. They seem to make it pretty clear that Randy is back for good, even outright saying this in the song We Missed You Randy. And even though we had to return to his old ways to save the town, this definitely felt like it was temporary, and this truly is the end of Tegrity. And as excited as I am to see the return of the Randy we knew for so much longer than the Randy we have at Tegrity, I have to admit it's bittersweet. Tegrity Farms brought some great and hilarious moments throughout the show, including the China and COVID storylines, so it will be a bit sad to no longer see what kind of insane antics this version of Randy will get up to. So, a toast to the life of Tegrity Farms and all of the good and bad it brought with it. And here's to new beginnings with the return of our favorite character. Oh, and before we go, let's listen to what the man himself has to say about the future. Fuck it! Let's smoke some weed! Oh, never mind.